Are you ready for a great adventure? Today on The World is Yours, we're heading to Cantabria, Spain. We'll explore some astonishing caves, feast on Spanish delicacies, and we'll hit the coast in Monte Bussiero. Then we're off to Jerusalem, a city that has been at the center of history since before it even began to be recorded, offering a one-of-a-kind adventure. Finally, we'll head over to the Miraflores Boardwalk in Lima, Peru. And we'll soak up the sun on the beaches of Costa Verde. It's time for another unforgettable adventure. Ready? Let's go! The world is waiting, and the world is yours. Cantabria is an historic Spanish community located on the northern tip of Spain. On the coast of the Bay of Biscay lies the capital city, Santander. Cantabria is no small region, spanning over 2,000 square miles. It's even bigger than the Grand Canyon. And with fewer than half a million people living in the area, there's a lot of beautiful landscapes to get out there and see, including a few underground. We're going deep for this one, and I mean literally. Located near the historic town of Santiana del Mar lies a subterranean treasure. It's time to flick on those headlamps and go underground. The cave of Altamira is unlike any in the world. It's not due to the twisting passages, which wind for almost 900 feet, nor the jagged shape the cave takes. It's not even the formations that took millions of years to make. No, what lures millions of people from all over the world is what you'll find on the walls. Drawings that are over 35,000 years old are among the art that adorn the walls of these prehistoric caves, giving some of the best known renditions of ancient cave art to date. The drawings that line the cave walls depict bison, deer, and horses, among many other things. One of the most impressive pieces within these caves is a corridor known as the Panel of Hands, which is estimated to be nearly 41,000 years old. This is definitely not the kind of art you'll see at the Louvre in Paris. Cantabria doesn't lack when it comes to caves. Located between the sea and mountains is another underground system of tunnels called the Soblao Caves. The natural passageways weave under the surface for more than 12 miles, with several mine galleries connected to it as well. A mine gallery is an underground mine in which entry or access is located above water level. The word Soblao, meaning blown, gives the cave its name by referencing the sensation that's felt when a natural passageway meets the mine gallery. The feeling of a really big wind gust. To get to the caves, we'll board a mine train that'll take us to a station inside the caves. From there, we'll continue by foot on a tour that can take anywhere between one to three hours to complete. The tunnel system brings us from the smooth, elegantly sweeping cave walls to the jagged, teeth-like spikes that hang from above. As majestic as these tunnels are, they're only the beginning of our adventure today. Excavating through history can definitely work up an appetite. Let's check out a dish that's a culinary staple from Cantabrian history. Since the 17th century, cocido montañés, or as it is commonly called, Highlander stew, has been a local favorite. This hearty bean stew would be cooked during the winter months, when the cold and wet season was brutal. It doesn't take much convincing to give this dish a try. Just the smell of collard greens fills the senses. Traditionally served with beans and pork, it's a meal meant to keep you full all day. The stew menu doesn't end there. While in Cantabria, you can't miss out on another culinary favorite, cocido lebaniego. This stew is made with chickpeas of potes, potato, and the compango, which is cured meat, chorizo, bacon, and knee bone. Wow, hope you brought your appetite. 
Now that we've filled up on some classic Cantabrian stew, it's time to hit the coast in Monte Busiero. This beach oasis is a unique region, which gives us the chance to relax on a sandy beach and then taking the view from one of the highest points in Cantabria. It is often called Green Spain due to the plush green ecosystem that thrives in the strip of land, making it a nature lover's paradise. On the coastal part of the Monte Busiero is a fishing village called Santona. This paradise on earth presents fantastic views of yellow sand and opaque blue waters. The Monte Busiero is dotted with several lighthouses, which have survived the test of time and mountainous terrain. The terrain makes for some great hiking and climbing, and trails can be found all across the region. Cantabria has been so much fun, whether wandering the underground system of natural tunnels, feasting on a hearty bowl of mountain stew, or exploring green Spain. It all adds up to a pretty awesome day. There's still a lot to do, so let's keep things rolling. But first, let's test your world knowledge. The Israel Museum in Jerusalem is renowned for housing which famous exhibit? A, secret languages. B, first book written. C, 10 commandments. D, Dead Sea Scrolls. The answer coming up when we return to The World Is Yours. We're back. Let's find out the answer to our question. The Israel Museum in Jerusalem is renowned for housing which famous exhibit? A, secret languages. B, first book written. C, 10 commandments. D, Dead Sea Scrolls. If you said D, Dead Sea Scrolls, you're right. These ancient scrolls, most of which were religious writings, were discovered just a mile from the west coast of the Dead Sea during the 1940s. The manuscripts remain one of the most important discoveries in history. Welcome to Jerusalem, one of the oldest cities in the world. Jerusalem rests on a plateau between the Mediterranean Sea and the Dead Sea. Its origin dates back to Mesopotamian times, when it was referred to on tablets as the City of Shalem. The Jerusalem that we know today began within an area that was a little bit over a square mile. The walls once acted as boundaries to the city. Today, it has grown to almost 49 square miles. This kind of growth took thousands of years. It even took place on neighboring seas. Jerusalem is the setting for many of history's most world-changing events, leading back to, and even before, the writings of religious manuscripts for all three monotheistic religions, Christianity, Islam, Judaism. The Sea of Galilee was often the backdrop for these famous stories, and today, we're checking out the real thing Located in northeast Israel, in the Jordan Rift Valley, this body of water is approximately 68 feet in diameter and nearly 150 feet deep. Because of the role that Jerusalem has had in the history of the world, the city has become a tourist attraction and religious relic. Tourists come from all over the world to witness firsthand the remnants left behind from a tumultuous history of victories and defeats. To add to the variety of activities to do while visiting this sacred place, different attractions have been added over the years. One of the newest attractions is the 40-mile hiking trail that includes a series of footpaths and cycling paths. Many people make the most of being near the second largest body of fresh water by casting a line. Contrary to the freshwater Sea of Galilee, the Dead Sea is a salt lake that rests between Israel and Jordan. At over 30 miles in diameter, it ties the Jordan Rift Valley to the Jordan River. You won't be finding a lot of fish in this lake, but it is definitely a sight to see. It's almost a thousand feet deep, and its shorelines are the lowest land elevation on Earth. The shore lies 1,388 feet below sea level. 
Its water has such a high salinity that swimming in it would be more like floating. This body of water has been a global attraction for thousands of years. In fact, it was one of the world's first health resorts. The minerals and water in this part of the world are renowned for use in creating health products. One of the most visited places in Jerusalem is a walled area of less than half a square mile called the Old City. Though it isn't large, it is the most important site for several religious faiths. Perhaps the most visually iconic site in all of Jerusalem is the Jewish Temple Mount. The site includes the Dome of the Rock, Western Wall, and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Each of these being some of the top places to see in the city. A holy place revered by Jews, Christians, and Muslims. This is the most symbolic location in all of Jerusalem. This is the place where Abraham, the father of all three monotheistic faiths, is said to have offered his son as a sacrifice to God. It is also where Solomon, King David's son, built the first temple for the Ark of the Covenant and where the prophet Muhammad is said to have ascended to heaven. Standing in a square is like walking through history, a feeling that is similarly felt throughout all of Jerusalem. The southern side of the mount is home to the Al-Aqsa Mosque. This symbolic building is said to be one of the oldest mosques in the world and offers one of the most beautiful churches in the city. Right outside the city walls is our next stop, Mount Zion. The hilltop's name is literally another name for the city of David, according to the Hebrew Bible. Since the Byzantine age, under rule of the Eastern Roman Empire, Mount Zion has been revered as a place where many religious figures spend time during their lives. Mount Zion is also the site of King David's tomb. King David was the king of Israel and Judah in the Hebrew Bible and a prophet in the Islamic faith. And if you climb up the stairs from the tomb's courtyard, you'll come to the setting of one of da Vinci's most influential works of art, the Last Supper Room. The room has served as both a church and a mosque throughout history. If you're in the mood to eat, Jerusalem is filled with delicious delicacies that will leave you wanting more. For instance, Msabaha takes traditional hummus to a new level. This dish leaves chickpeas whole instead of mashed. Lemon juice, cumin, and parsley give the dish some extra zest. Like hummus, it's commonly enjoyed with pita bread. If you're in the mood for something a little more substantial, try falafels. Falafels are deep fried balls made of donut or a mixture of chickpeas and fava beans. They're a traditional Middle Eastern dish. And as it goes with all good ingredients, there are lots of ways to enjoy it. On salads, sandwiches, or just pop them on their own. These fritter-like treats go perfectly with pita bread and hummus. Give them a try. Now that we're energized, let's keep moving. We still have one more place to see. Jerusalem is a melting pot for history, but it's time to leave the past and head to the present as we kick back on the beach in our last stop. But first, let's test your world knowledge. Which famous Spanish conquistador founded Lima in 1532 after conquering the Incan Empire? A. Christopher Columbus B. Francisco Pizarro C. Samuel de Champlain D. Alexander the Great The answer coming up when we return to The World is Yours. Let's find out the answer to our question. Which famous Spanish conquistador founded Lima in 1532 after conquering the Incan Empire? A, Christopher Columbus. B, Francisco Pizarro. C, Samuel de Champlain. D, Alexander the Great. If you said B, Francisco Pizarro, you're right. 
The Spanish conquistador had tried to establish a Spanish capital in several Incan cities, and he was finally successful in Lima. Originally, it was called Ciudad de los Reyes, meaning City of Kings. Lima is the capital of Peru, along the Pacific coast of South America. It's also the most populous city in Peru, with a count upwards of 10 million people. The relativity to the port of Callao makes Lima a massive metropolitan of more than a thousand square miles. It's come a long way since it was established by Pizarro nearly 500 years ago. Lima features bustling shopping areas and squares like Plaza Mayor and the largest concentration of museums in Peru. The historic district of Lima is home to the Monastery of San Francisco and the Palace of Torre Tagle. From the beautiful Spanish Baroque architecture at the monastery, we move to a watery form of architecture. The dazzling visual display is not a trick of your eyes, and it's not magic. This colorful and artfully designed magic water circuit is one of the top sights to see while in Lima. From a distance, these streams of light have the appearance of metal or even stone. But a closer look reveals that the trick behind this light show may not be so solid. Light and water blend together like paint. Some exhibits elegantly poise, while others dance and move graciously through the air. In total, the water circuit includes 13 illuminated fountains installed in 2007. This unique exhibit can have crowds enamored for hours at a time. You can run with your friends through the tunnel of surprises. Even get a picture inside the walk-in dome. The string-like jets of water at the Fountain of Harmony look like they could be tying the entire structure together. It's difficult to tell where water ends and the structure begins at the Fountain of Life. At the Fantasia Fountain, the 130-yard masterpiece becomes a choreographed spectacular. When the show is over, the fun continues. The fountains are giant playgrounds that anyone can enjoy. A great start to our tour through Lima. The Miraflores Malecon, or boardwalk, is possibly the most emblematic attraction in the area. This stunning cliff-top walk offers incredible views of the Pacific coast. And it's a great place to see the social buzz of the city life around you. Several parks line the boardwalk like the picnic-friendly Love Park, or the bustling Kennedy Park, which has become known for a peculiar thing. Cats, lots of cats. What? Yes, cats. They've lived there for over 20 years. The feline residents number in the hundreds and can rest assured knowing that the city of Miraflores is protecting them. The Waka Pukiana is another top spot along the boardwalk. This clay pyramid was once a ceremonial structure for the Lima culture that existed in the region between 200 AD and 700 AD. Now it's accessible to the public as one of the only remaining archaeological sites in the area. There's more to see and do in Lima. It's time to head out to the coast. But first, let's test your world knowledge. Lima became a prosperous city in the 17th century in part due to a trade route for what commodity? A. Silver B. Gold C. Beans D. Chocolate The answer coming up when we return to The World is Yours. We're back. Let's find out the answer to our question. Lima became a prosperous city in the 17th century, in part due to a trade route for what commodity? A. Silver B. Gold C. Beans D. Chocolate If you said A. Silver, you're right! The Andes Mountains was a massive mine for silver, which was exported from the nearby port of Callao. Many people relocated to Lima between 1619 and 1687, tripling the size of the population at the time. From the peaks of the Andes Mountains, 
we head over to the coastline at Costa Verde. Meaning green coast, this shoreline is right off of the Miraflores boardwalk. This remote beach isn't as known to tourists as others, but there is another community that is flourishing on the waters of Costa Verde. Surfers. The beach is a great place for beginners, making it the perfect opportunity to see if you're born for water sports. It's one of the best places to surf in all of Peru because of its waves, but also because of its shape. The steep angle of the shore and the curve of the beach make it a perfect natural wave-making machine. The consistent flow of waves makes practicing much easier. So don't worry if you fall off a few times. There are plenty of waves left to catch, and the waters are warm enough to relax in for a while. Well, that brings an end to our journey for today. We went deep to experience the incredible subterranean caves beneath Cantabria, Spain. We explored Jerusalem, one of the oldest, most important historical cities in the world. And we cruised the boardwalk and hit some waves in Lima, Peru. Thanks for joining us on our trip around the world. There are many more adventures to come. Until next time, the world is waiting and the world is yours.